How's it going, gang? Good. <laughs> Welcome, Greg. Uh, tell us where you are and what life is like at the moment. <laughs> uh, well, there's what life would have been like had this commission not come in. I mean, it would have just been uh, unremitting misery uh, and total boredom. And, uh, you know, and my, my uh, notebook would have been totally empty. You know, <laughs> I saw this thing come in into the inbox saying, you know, from Sruli saying he wanted a piece. And, and uh, yeah, it's like <laughs> everybody I'm talking to is, is going through something similar where they feel like that it's good to have a project. But if you don't have somebody asking you to do a project, it's also sometimes difficult to self-motivate, you know. So I was incredibly grateful um, <laughs> when I received this and I realized like, oh good, I have some, I have to do something. <laughs> oh, well, we're so thrilled. Um, I mean, just, you know, admired so many of the things that you've been doing, everything you've been oh, doing. Oh, thanks. So kind of cool to imagine you interfacing with David Fossen, who's just- Oh yeah, it's been so fun. I didn't know him at all. <laughs> Have you worked? Have you did you work together over Zoom? Or how did you? Well, yeah, we've had uh, we've met a couple times um, over the past few weeks. Um, <laughs> you know, like the the score, the way I wrote it. You know, I mean, absolutely pristine, lacking any dynamic markings, articulation markings. It just looks like it was you know, spat out by a computer or something. And, uh, but then, you know, as we start rehearsing it, that's when, you know, um, I can um, demand of him that he, he um, you know, play as loud as possible with the softest mallets that he has or, or other things that are extremely awkward <laughs> and maybe not his first, um, first choice. <coughs> Remove the resonators from the xylophone to make it harder to hear what notes he's playing. Um, no, it's been so fun. I mean, actually, we had a phone call, you know, uh, pretty soon after I sent it to him. And uh, I don't know, I just felt like it clicked immediately. He, he really, like, we just were feeling the same kind of um, tension um, about, you know, what to try and project, you know, with the piece or whatever. It's been it so be hard. It must be hard, though, as a drummer sometimes to be able to work with another drummer. You know, nah. like, how do you tell them to do the things that are your like, like, like um, personal things? You know, I wasn't even, you know, I wasn't even thinking about the drums actually. Um, I've been spending lockdown with my partner Sarah, and um, you know, one thing I've noticed about um, a lot of people having their lockdown, you know, I see people like. Oh, we've been catching up on all these TV shows, and we've been watching all these movies. And and Sarah doesn't like movies; it's too scary. TV show, same thing. Doesn't matter. I think she saw Mrs. Doubtfire when she was a kid, and that was it. She cut off and said, <laughs> "Okay, I'm not doing movies." So, like, we're sitting here in lockdown for months, and like, what are we going to do? You know. And finally, I convinced her to watch the least threatening thing that I could find, which was Beatles Anthology One. Uh, you know, just a document <laughs> of the early Beatles. And so we watched this thing one night and the next morning, you know, the commission had come in like maybe that week or something. And next morning I wake up and it's like all I hear is the Beatles in my head, you know, just, uh, uh, I mean, I hear them singing and I hear their voices and stuff and I suddenly feel really inspired, you know, I wake up early and, and uh, you know, I grabbed this notebook and I, and I just it kind of like wrote most of it in one sitting. I was. I was thinking too about what I had been thinking about until we watched the Beatles anthology. I was, I was thinking about this. Uh, there's a oratory, an early uh, Italian oratorio by uh, Handel called La Resurrezione, in which uh, there's this one part that I really like. Have always loved where 
where it's called the plundering of hell. This angel comes down and busts open the gates of hell and is going to steal a bunch of souls that are trapped there and kidnap them basically and take them to heaven. And, you know, we've all been thinking so much about, you know, the abolition of the police state in our country. And and uh, it just it seemed like such a perfect metaphor for, for prison abolition and stuff. So so like that's what I the piece I wanted to write and then the then this um then this uh, like Beatles stuff came in uh, out of nowhere and that was like stuck in my head so then almost in one sitting I kind of made a rough draft of the whole piece and uh and then uh spent a few days kind of tinkering with it and then sent it off to David and then it's been like nothing but uh, fun since then till now <laughs> <laughs> John, Paul, George, and Bingo pry open the gates of hell. Just so everyone the one, yeah. imagines that amazing, amazing. title. Amazing. Um, and, and now we have the background for why that. I want to um, thank Michael Kushner for supporting this your work. Yeah, thank you so much. I, I, really, it's like it's not just abstract and theoretical. It's like literally my days were different and I spent them doing a thing. It was like it made a real difference in a real human being's life. So this has been an incredible uh, privilege for me. Thank you all so much. That's great. Thank you.